Pittsfield, Massachusetts. says that God, Christ Jesus, and helping others is the same. God, your religion, and helping others are synonymous and interchangeable. Help others evermore. Help others without ceasing. In everything, help others. For this is the will of God. Help others concerning you. That's it. First, Thess First Thessalonians, let's try it again. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 6, 7, and 8. Help others evermore. Help others without ceasing. In everything, help others. For this is the will of God. In helping others. Concerning you. Now, our song says the same thing. I love to tell the story of unseen things above. Helping others. Of Jesus and his glory. Of Jesus and his love. Of helping others and its love. I love to tell the story because I know it's true. Helping others, it's true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme in glory. The old, old, old story of 
Jesus and his love. The old, old, old story of helping others in its love. It will satisfy your longing as nothing else will do. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of helping others, of helping others and its glory. Of helping others and its love. I love to tell the story because I know that helping others is true. It satisfies my longing. Helping others satisfies my longing as nothing else will do. Nothing could be truer. I love to tell the story. It will be my theme and glory. Helping others is our theme and glory. The old, old story of helping others and its love. Yuki! Let's see if we can find some jokes for you. A man came home from work and he drove into the driveway. And his little five-year-old daughter was standing there. He gets out of the car and he says, what's the matter? She looks distressed. What's the matter, honey? She said, I've been having nothing but problems all day long with your wife. A couple had identical twin girls, identical twin girls, and they named them Kate and Duplicate. Okay. Uh, a lawyer said it gives me a grand and glorious feeling to dispense legal advice. His client says, that's right, you give him a grand and he feels glorious. An ideal contract for a lawyer is what, folks? Words too big to pronounce and printing too small to read. And if you can't get a lawyer who knows the law, then for heaven's sake, get one who knows the judge. The lawyer says, I want a new trial on the basis of new evidence. And the judge says, what's the new evidence? And the lawyer says, I just found out my client has another $10,000. The lawyer says to the new client, I will take your case on a retainer. That will cost you $3,000 and you're entitled to two questions. Client. $3,000, two questions. Isn't that expensive? Perhaps, the lawyer said, what's your second question? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Said the lawyer, the bricks in the wall are loose. We have a great case, we will sue Mother Goose. Uh, you know what they're taught in law school, folks? The young lawyers, the law students, they're taught, if you know the facts, hammer the facts. If you know the law, hammer the law. If you don't know either, you hammer the table. And how can a lawyer write a paper of 5,000 words and call it a brief? A young man was asked, how much money do you have in the bank? And he said, I don't know, I haven't shaken it lately. Hold on. Do you know that the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. And the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. Therefore, only those people who are left-handed are in their right minds.
How are we doing, Clark? Yeah, we're doing fine. I want to play a video for you. Hi folks, you've heard of the TV show 60 Minutes? Well, the name of this show is 30 Seconds. The next time you go to the supermarket, will you bypass the meat counter and go to the frozen food cases and load up your grocery cart with veggie meats? Hamburger, chicken, turkey, ham. 89 years old, no doctors, no medicine, and my cat is vegan too. the commercial. Uh, that $1,000, 30 seconds every day, Monday through Friday uh, in April, on Channel 6, a broadcast TV station, Albany, New York, capital of the Empire State. Should we save up another thousand dollars and do that? I think it would be almost like that, but a little bit different. Here's what I have in mind. Are uh, you going to wear the? I wear the snowman suit instead of the polar bear suit. Hi, folks. Computers are in the Bible. Eve said to Adam, "Do you want an apple too?" The next time you go to the supermarket, will you please bypass the meat counter and go to the frozen food cases and load up your grocery cart with veggie meats, hamburger, chicken, turkey, ham, 90 years old, no doctors, no medicine, and my cat is vegan too. What do you think? Do you think it helps the animals any? That's our prime objective. Stop this slaughtering of animals. Stop this bringing animals into the world of cruelty and filth and urine and feces and the stench when you go by a farm. Those poor babies have to live in that for eight or ten years before they're sent into ugly, ugly circumstances of transportation, painful, to a miserable death in a slaughterhouse. We have to stop it. Do you think these spots will help people become vegan? You know, there's over 90 veggie meat entrees. Well, tell me, will you? 
you can find out something that I probably can't find out just by listening. Going into your sanctuary and listening to your soul. And it's imperative that you go vegan. Have nothing to do with animal products. Honey, fur, meat, eggs, ugly, ugly things to eat. Okay. Now, Earth Day was April 17th. I have a little tiny clock, a little red clock, a little tiny, tiny clock. And at 7 o'clock it sounds the alarm. And no matter what, I stop and I think of the spin of the earth, another spin of the earth, another 24 hours. The electricity, the magnetism, the electromagnetic spectrum, the gravity, the air. Three minutes without air and you're gone. The water, running water, hot water, big oceans, big lakes, big rivers. And then right in our backyard, the tiny Valacia kill. The soil, the magic of the soil, the beauty, the gold in it, the, the vegetables and the flowers and the fruit that come out of it. Thrilling. Gravity. Seven o'clock every night that little alarm goes off and we stop and we think of the beauty of the spin of the earth. The continents. It isn't all water. We have to have land to live on, don't we? North America, South America, Africa, Antarctica, Australia, Europe, Asia, and Arctic. We have land. Here's something to play for you. public access in the District of Columbia, the nation's capital, says they want Glendora to list credits, the people who put the show together. But there aren't any people. Glendora does the whole thing herself. You can't say Glendora, director, producer, lighting, uh, graphics. No. It's just one person who does it, and it's only one person that is responsible for the mess that this show is. And then on second thought, I begin to think, everybody is responsible for it. Everybody gets credit. Everything and everybody in the whole universe gets credit for it. Without everybody and everything, it would not be possible. So, to the glory of God, God gets the credit. God helping others. Christ in your religion, whatever it is. And so, I made a new show and I think overcame many of their other criticisms. And I was going to show you the uh, slate that I put at the end with a great big Amen. To the glory of God, God gets the credit. 
And we send it down to them. They have, in their brilliant way, processed it for file transfer protocol. So technically it's all ready to go on the tube. And now it's in the hands of programming again. And we'll see what they'll do with that one. I would think, you know, they're so astute. Acumen. Keenness. Yet they're so dumb, obtuse, about the law. Public access is a law. Federal, state, and municipal. And 531E, the law, by the way, is Title 47 of the United States Code, Section 521, et sequitur. And 531E says those people who cable cast the programs of public access TV stations shall not ever exercise editorial control. You cannot tell a public access producer what he can say or what he or she cannot say on his or her program. Forbidden editorial control. And they don't seem to see that. I've already sued them once. They could be sued again. Whether they win the case or not and get it dismissed, it's going to cost them like $17,000 to defend it. And that applies to you too, Philly. Philly Cam and Debbie Rudman. You cannot exercise forbidden editorial control over public access TV. We are the last of the people. The only people who tell it as it is. We are not responsible to any corporations. Our work is all volunteer. I volunteer 14 days, 7 days a week on this program. And I don't get paid. Well, let's see what they do. It's your turn. The ball is in your court, Debbie Rudman. My sponsor is Elite. He's a PhD from Harvard. You don't go higher than that. You can always tell a man from Harvard. The trouble is you can't tell him much. And he is a lecturer in the Department of Psychology in the University of Pennsylvania, which you know to be one of our most prestigious private colleges. It's in Philadelphia the city of brotherly love. So, the ball is in your court. I've got to find that, uh, I've got to find the uh, thing I meant to play. One, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That is not it. Okay, let's try this one. Oh. 
Ham, 89 years old, no doctors, no medicine, and my cat is vegan too. <laughs> uh, another thing I'd like to, another thing I'd like to mention to you folks. Do you agree that uh, when all is said and done, the only thing that really mattered is how you treated others? Do you agree? Uh, a picketer was carrying a sign that said, Time heals all wounds. And the picketer behind him said, A sign that said, Time and a half heals them faster. <laughs> <laughs> An earthquake was reported to be on its way in California. So this couple sent their young son deep into the interior where he would be safe with an uncle. In two days, they got an email that said, returning the boys in the earthquake. <laughs> now, this man was a fan of the great composer, Ludwig von Beethoven, and he went to the composer's grave, and he's standing there, folks, and here are all these Beethoven symphonies coming out of the ground. But, they are being played in reverse. They're being played backwards and they're being played in the reverse order in which they were written. Beethoven's ninth, Beethoven's eighth, seventh, sixth, way down to the first. And he says, I don't get it, to the great guy. He said to the great leader, I don't get it. I'm trying to hear these Beethoven symphonies, they're being played backwards, they're being played in reverse order in which they were written. And the great leader said, don't you get it? He's decomposing. <laughs> Yes, it is in today's. <laughs> 